part two of Sleepover Stories. Oh, there was one time I was having a sleepover with somebody and I was doing drugs. Wow, I see a pattern here. And uh, I, I went to go walk downstairs to get something and I happened to look out the front door and there was literally a gang war going on like right in front of my house. There were like two groups of people and it was like a movie. They were running at each other and they had like baseball bats and like it was ridiculous. And I, I'm like, oh, what the fuck do I do? So I called the cops and I'm like, oh, yeah, so there's a gang fight out in front of my house. And then um, the cops showed up and I was on, I was like real fucked up on drugs. So I refused to answer the door. My mom had to answer it. She's like, I don't even know what's going on. She's like, they were fighting. It's done now. I got, I'm going back to bed. The cops like, oh, okay, cool. But that was that was a really weird sleepover because it was like uh, the first time I ever I had ever done this certain type of drug, and this the most ridiculous thing a gang fight in front of my house was happening at the same time. I think I was there for that too. Impossible because uh, I remember there was a like, so it wasn't from what I remember it was like a big scuffle. Mm-hmm. I mean, but it was mostly people just talking shit to each other and kind of like they're messing. They weren't actually going to like have a real fight. They're mm-hmm. just kind of like two people just kind of like, you know, talking shit and just kind of like going at it. But they were friendly with each other or, mm-hmm. you know, like how drunk people sometimes like beat the shit out of each other for fun. Okay. Kind of like one of those things. That's not what I remember, but I was also real screwed up. So I'm sure I blew it way out of proportion. But but we, I was also, like, very high at the time. And mm-hmm. we're both very scared and kind of hid, hid inside because, like, fuck, there's a gang fight. So mm-hmm. What if they come in here? So we mm-hmm. locked the doors and got, like, super super paranoid. Mm-hmm. As you do. <laughs> and it, it was fun. Uh, that, though that reminds me of another time. I, the same place there. So I slept over at your house. And you had work very early in the morning. And we... It was me, you, and uh, our other friend, uh, Nick. Another Nick. Okay. But uh, you were sleeping in one room, and me and Nick were just hanging out, like, watching stuff. Uh, he was very into Cheryl Park Boys and uh, some other show, and he was all about me watching it with him. But uh, we were super high, and we decided to go outside because your mom was doing laundry at 3 a.m. in the morning. Okay. She, she was doing drying, and the fucking whole apartment was, like, super hot because all the heat rises. Yeah. And we're on the top floor. So we we're just like sweating our balls off and just needed to relax a little bit. So we went outside and uh, this is in uh, Rochester, uh, New Hampshire. So it's like, it's, it's kind of like casual a bit. It's, it's, it's kind of towny. There's stuff to do, essentially. I mean, it's not just like a uh, middle of nowhere. It is a city. Yeah. And we went to the school park. So it was like a little park down the road and... They had swing sets, uh, jungle jam, you know, a couple of little things there. Nothing too big, but those had like a public pool. But we just went there, just mostly to go on the swings and just kind of not be as hot. And so we're out there, and uh, Nick was very into smoking cigarettes, so he was smoking a cigarette or two. Uh, he was of age, so it was fine. He was 18. And it's like we're just kind of mind growing business, and all of a sudden we see this gaggle of girls like this huge big group of girls just kind of running and then they go like towards where the pool is i'm like that's weird these girls must have been like 13 14 and then we see them all like running off and giggling like about five minutes later and I'm like huh okay and so we're just gonna sitting there you know really high and all of a sudden we see some cops and the cops are walking around and they have some lights and they see us and they approach us, and they start talking to us, like, so what you doing here? It's like, you know, we're just sleeping over at a friend's house, and uh, they're doing laundry right now, they like the heat, and it's got really hot, so we just kind of cooled down a little bit. And so he asked us a bunch of questions. I didn't have an ID on me, but Nick did, so Nick was fine, pretty much. But they started asking us questions, and the guy started asking me questions about my name and who I was, and trying to, like, trip me up, like, what's your date of birth? So I told him, and he kept on, like, saying it back in weird ways. So it's 9161, 1961. One one ninety six, you know, like it's something saying like weird things to try to see if I was like lying, and it, eventually you know the cops were cool and they're like okay you guys need to go back in there's a curfew you guys are of age so you're fine but there was a group of girls who actually went skinny dipping in the pool recently and we're trying to find them have you seen them at all it's like oh yeah we actually saw a group of girls who were over there but I guess they were skinny dipping hmm. and I think Nick had 
taken some dextromorphin, so like mm-hmm. the cough syrup, and he was like dextromethorphan. He was he was tripping essentially, and also high and on cigarettes, and uh, we're like, okay, so we headed back, but that that was the kind of weird time because a bunch of twelve to fourteen year old girls were skinny dipping, and we we got caught by the cops. Well, you wait, you got caught by the cops. <laughs> Not what did really. you get caught doing? Uh, we weren't doing nothing wrong. No, we weren't doing anything wrong. And the curfew didn't apply to us, so we're fine. We're fine. But they told us to go back in, and we're like, okay. And then we went back and smoked more weed. That sounds all right, yeah. This is back when it used to be exciting. Now I'm not very exciting. No, now you're boring as fuck. It really, it's really true. But uh, we didn't wake you up, though. That was the fun part. That's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. Though I don't think we could have waked, woken you up. I don't know. Maybe. Probably not. Now, this is a side tangent, but there was that time you did Selvia. And you saw, like, Lego bricks everywhere? Yeah. Can you tell that story? <laughs> that has nothing to do with sleepovers, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so my w- my sister and I heard about uh, Salvia, this cool, super hallucinogen that is completely legal. So I went out and I bought some. And what I, I think they were, like, it was, like, 10x, 20x, whatever. I just bought whatever the highest was. I think it was 60x at the time. And uh, we put it in a bong. And uh, ripped that motherfucker, and uh, I. So there are two two phases to this. One is what I saw, and one is what reality was. So what I saw, and what I. It, so it, from my perspective, I was all of a sudden transported outside, and everything was made of Legos, all different colors, and the wall, like it had. There's actually, and this is really weird. There's this picture online. If you look up like a uh, uh, like wall made of Legos or something of a, a section of wall that had that like a uh, corner of a wall that had chipped out and somebody replaced it with Legos to make it look like underneath everything's made of Legos. That's exactly what the world looked like. And it was bright out and I was uh, just walking walking down the street and having a good time. Then I came to and I was laying on the ground in my sister's in my sister's living room with I had pissed my pants and I was fucking losing it laughing and my mom came over and she's like what is going on over here because she heard me laughing and so I was just like mom we're doing salvia and mom's like what and she's like no it's legal and I was like whatever and went back because we weren't even over her house she just happened to live next door so apparently what really happened was I took the hit, I put it down, I held it in, and then I started laughing. And I laughed for like 90 seconds to <laughs> two minutes straight, doubled over holding my gut and immediately pissed myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was laughing so hard. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> So I think I'm walking around outside in Legoland, and really I'm laying on the ground pissing. Mm-hmm. It's it's a fun story, I think. Uh, there's another story from uh, his girlfriend at the time, uh, it's r- around the same time as that happened. I wasn't for that for, the, for that one, but uh, your girlfriend at the time was called her uh, Casey. Uh, she she was doing salvia, and I was in the room with her, and uh, I was too puss to uh, do salvia. But she, she took a hit, and then uh, she kind of like leaned back a little bit, and then she's like, whoa. And then, you know, about, like, a few minutes go by, and she's like, ah, I didn't like that. I'm not going to do that again. I was like, w- what happened? She's like, so I, you know that sensation you get when you fall back and you can't catch yourself? Like, you no, know, say, with, with your chair? I had that, except for the whole trip. I just felt like I was falling backwards. Wow. That's intense. Salvia was, like, super intense. Uh, hallucinogen, like wild, completely took me out of the world. No idea why I was laughing. <laughs> no idea at all. Um, but I remember uh, when we were in college, we went out into the woods and some people were doing salvia. I had already done it, so I'm like, I'm good. But I told people about my story ahead of time, and I, and I told them, I'm like, I was doubled over laughing and I pissed myself. So go to the bathroom before you, you do this. And like everybody laughed and they're like, yeah, fucking whatever. And then one of the kids pissed himself while we were doing it. And he's like, I am so glad that you told your story first because now I'm not embarrassed. If it had just been me pissing myself, I would have been so embarrassed. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, that, them's, the, them's the breaks. 
I think I somewhat remember that story. Uh, what happened during that exactly? Um, I don't. I don't even know. We went out into the into the woods. We were all high, uh, and then some people wanted to smoke some smoke salvia. There was like a tree swing there too for whatever reason. There was like a rope with knots on it, so you could like swing on it. And one kid was like grabbed on. He was stood up while he was doing it. Everybody, I told everybody, you need to be sitting. One guy decided he wanted to stand. He took takes the hit, holds it in, lets it out, and is like, "This is not." <laughs> and then immediately starts to fall backwards, <laughs> hits the rope, grabs it, and is like hanging onto it. It's just hanging there for like thirty seconds to, to sixty seconds, just zoned out completely. And then he came comes to, lets go, and falls straight onto his back. Luckily, it was like a, a short fall because he had caught himself on the rope. It, it was amazing. <laughs> he was just like completely <laughs> gone. Mm-hmm. Selfie is very intense. I, I used to watch like lots of uh, people doing videos of it. Like they take it and then they just like get really fucked up. It's actually a popular series on YouTube for a while. It was called, on, on YouTube for a while. It's called Driving on Selvia. And so it's a guy like uh, he gets in the car and everything and he's like, okay. I'm going to show you how to drive on Selvia. And for anyone listening, never drive on Selvia. It's terrible. But really not that much of a problem because he like, it's okay, so we're going to take the Selvia. It's in the bowl. We're going to take the hit here. All right. Then we hold it in for 30 seconds. Wait till your eyes vibrate. Your vision starts, you know, going, going crazy, crazy, crazy. And then he just like just goes out of it. He's just like, like <laughs> just useless. He, ke- <laughs> he grabs the keys and it's like, just moving his arms about like flip, like aimlessly. And it's like, whoa, mm-hmm. this is, I took too much there, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I mean that one. That one takes you completely out of it. Not, uh, you know, for a single experience, worth it. I, I, not something I would want to do over and over again. I don't. I like being in control, and to to lose all control like that is uh, paralyzing for me. Mm-hmm. One thing I don't like about sleeping over people's houses is you lose control of, like, the environment. Like, you can't really, like, choose certain things. Like, you're kind of going according to their schedule and what they want. Mm. And it, it's, 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 it's even worse when people just let you do what you want because it's like, what do I do? Yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's difficult because, like, when you – when someone's – when you're at a sleepover – both people want, you know, to have have each other have a good time. Everybody wants to have a good time together. But then you're like, so what should we do? And nobody wants to come up with anything or or propose anything. Uh, that's the most frustrating for me when it's like, well, there's like – we can do a million things. I'll propose like 50 things. But you got to help me choose one because I want to know what you want to do too. Like there needs to be input. That's one of the most frustrating things about, uh, about you know – spending a lot of time over somebody's house for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, this is something I've learned as I've gotten older is sometimes if there's no group leader, you have, kind of, you have to like take the role and make something happen. And it sucks sometimes because if people don't give you accurate feedback about what they want to do, then they're not going to have a good time and it's going to suck. But sometimes you just have to be like, okay, this is what we're doing. And people are going, uh, okay, we're going to the bar, or we're going to play this game here, or we're going to spin the bottle, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, whatever it may be. But you have to actually take the, the leadership there, because otherwise people just like, huh, what do we want to do? What do you want to do? Yeah, yeah. So do you have any, any more sleepover stories? Not particularly. I mean, there was maybe one story where my friend, uh, Melcher, same, same friend, I slipped over his house a bit a few times, and it, it was fine usually. But uh, he had this picture of this like half naked girl uh, with like mesh, like uh, like a mesh shirt or something. So you can kind of pretty much see the boobs, but they cut the nipples out, of course. But uh, he used to have it on his door, but then he put it on his ceiling, like you know, it was a bunk bed. And uh, I, I just spent the whole night looking at it to kind of be like, "Don't get a boner, Nate. Don't get a boner." <laughs> Because, you know, what would, I, what would I do with it? And and then I think the same night uh, I was sleeping and I turned over in my sleep and I fell off the bed because there's no, like, rail on the bed. So I just fell off, but I landed on my feet. <laughs> Nathan the cat. <laughs> and Melcher wakes up. Did you just fall off the – did you land on your feet? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's ridiculous. It, instinct, I guess. I mean, mm. maybe it's like from our ancient ancestors who fell out of trees. That's it. Yeah, it, it's all comes back to that. Scientism, fuck yeah. Scientism. Yeah, I'm like like just making shit up. Oh, uh-huh. like pseudoscience. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're good at that. Yeah, very good at that. Like, I think when sweepovers happen, it's a way of bonding with each other mm-hmm. emotionally, physically, and <laughs> <laughs> that woogie scared me. The woogie, emotionally, <laughs> physically, uh, that's when I cocked my head to the side. Like, really? Okay. <laughs> I guess it's true of a lot of different sleepovers. Okay, if it's a girlfriend or boyfriend or a uh, friend friend, uh, like, like like a friend with benefits mm-hmm. or you know, we want to call them, maybe it's physically. If it's just a friend, maybe it's not so physical. Mm. Sometimes sharing a bed with somebody is the worst. Uh, I remember growing up, or sometimes we'd spend the night over at my grandmother's house and her and my grandfather um, would were sleeping in different rooms, in different beds, um, just because of the way that my grandfather's back is. He has to. So when my brother and I would sleep over, we would sleep in her bed and then she would sleep with my grandfather. And my brother would always spend the first hour of us trying to go to bed going, ow, Steve, stop hitting me so that I would get in trouble with my grandmother because she would yell at me to be like, Steven, stop hitting your brother. Mm. And, of course, I wasn't doing anything, so what am I supposed to do? And then he's like, ow, just to get a rise out of her. And he would, it progressed. In, and I'm like, Nick, there's, what am I supposed to do? Like, I can't, I can't not hit him to not hit him. So I was, he, yeah, he trolled me wicked hard. That's terrible with brothers. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. It was genius. It was absolutely brilliant. Okay, uh, I just remembered a sleepover story for yourself. Okay. Um, that time you slept with twins. Oh yeah, that was that was not real. Not real. Well, yeah, I mean, I slept over their house. But you slept in the same bed as them. Mm, I don't. I don't know. Did I? I don't even remember anymore. Yeah, because I think the story was uh, so. This is another Melcher story, but uh, is you Melcher and these two. Decently attractive uh, girls. I don't think they were twins. Were they twins? Yes. So they're twins. But uh, there's a whole question about where people were sleeping and stuff. And Melcher wanted to sleep with them. Uh, not, not, not like sexually. I mean sexually, but also not sexually. But uh, they're like, uh, no. Uh, where's Steve going to sleep? Oh, he can sleep on our bed. Mm-hmm. So you, you slept like between them or on some side. or But you slept in the same bed as them. Yeah, I think I was obnoxious about that for like, 365 days you, you bragged about it quite a lot so <laughs> the fucking worst so fucking embarrassing you uh i mean you mostly wanted to make melcher feel bad mm-hmm. and kind of like not humiliate but kind of like haha i slept with them i slept with them that you didn't mm-hmm. and it worked pretty well yeah it's pretty great. i was really really fucking annoying and i apologize to them for <laughs> never ever stopping I have a lot of people I need to apologize for fucking driving things into the dirt. I mean, th- to be honest, though, I mean, if I slept with twins, I would brag about it, too. So I don't remember, like, I, I don't remember the, the initial story of how that happened, but I was literally just thinking about that, like, a day ago, how obnoxious <laughs> I was, and it was the most cringy shit in the world. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> it's awful. So I can't wait for our 10-year reunion so I can go apologize to people. <laughs> Feel like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm a fucking obnoxious twerd. I mean, we kind of all were in high school. And, you know, sometimes things are obnoxious. Like with sleepovers, there's the new, exciting, terrifying stuff that you're not used to. And that's what makes kind of them exciting, but also kind of like, uh, fuck this shit. Mm. But uh, some shit you shouldn't fuck, but rather you should subscribe to is our podcast. Absolutely, and there's nothing terrifying about the new podcast episode that we release every single Monday. It's been over two years now. We've never missed a single day. And if you want to get at us, you can go to twitter.com slash WNTT1. And if you want to donate, check out our Patreon, and maybe we'll have a sleepover. Yeah, yeah. and also we have a Facebook, but Facebook sucks. Facebook is awful. 
it, they don't like us very much. They're blocking our content a lot. WNTTpodcast.com is our website, or you can check us out at podcastnh.com. That's the network we're a part of and highly suggested for all of your podcast wants. Yep, and until next time, um, we'll have a sleepover. We'll sleep with twins. We'll sleep with you. We'll sleep with everyone, and we'll bring blankets and pillows for everyone. Bring our podcast to your sleepover. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great marketing idea. Absolutely. We need to talk. Hey, Peppin. Yo, yo. Do you usually subscribe to entire podcasts, or do you look for specific topics? Well, I try using the search function on my podcast player on my phone. It doesn't work too well. I try using Google. Google, it's not really set up for it, so I honestly have trouble. Why don't you just use Listen Notes? Listen Notes? What's that? It's a search engine for podcasts that doesn't just search for the terms you're looking for in the title of the episode or the title of the podcast, but from inside the episode itself, meaning if you're looking for a specific topic, you can find specific podcast episodes that are about that topic. You know, that sounds a lot easier than spending the hours and hours I have just trying to find the exact right keywords to actually get it to bring up the episode. I mean, usually I just get like a million uh, how to start your own podcast articles if it's really annoying. So that sounds a lot better. Exactly. When you're looking for something to listen to, just go to listennotes.com, type in a topic you're interested in, and you'll get instant gratification, useful results. That's listennotes.com. Check it out now.